I'm kind of, oh, I'm kind of nervous about this because my goal is to to get a bit more personal here and answer some more kind of like personal questions and yeah. Oh, okay, so <laughs> just dive straight into a deep one. So uh, me and my girlfriend have been together for coming up to two years now, which is just crazy because it's two years of doing long distance, which is definitely, definitely not easy. And I don't even know, because I, I try not to talk about it too much because I don't even want to get myself down. But I don't know if it really comes across that in videos. If like, it's been almost two years and it is hard. Like I do not recommend long distance to anybody. The only reason we're doing it is because it's the only option. And like, we want to be together and like love each other like that much. But what was the next bit? And how do you manage the long distance? So, I mean, we manage it kind of the best that we can. We try communicate really well. And a lot of the times it still doesn't work that well because when issues arise, Texting, not the best, because you can misinterpret how things are being said. And on the phone, not the best, because yeah, you can talk it out and you can communicate better, but like when you've solved the issue or whatever, you, you can't be with each other, do you know what I mean? You're missing that human interaction. So we just do the best that we can. Like, that's why there is a lot of back and forth. Like, she used to come to like London a lot because her job could offer um, working remote and things like that, which was great. But then at the same time, it, it was actually very hard because she had to kind of work in the evenings as well. So even though we were with each other, like it still put this kind of like stress. So we manage it the best that we can. We try to stay positive. And the key thing I think that's been for us is having this end goal in mind. Like we both, we both work well on having an end goal. In all honesty, I feel I'm still finding it. I've just refined it. I've refined it. <laughs> I've just been able to refine it over the years and understand what I like, what I don't like, and what I think works for me and what doesn't work for me. But in all honesty, it's just trial and error. Like that's what I've done. It's just, I try things and I see if I like it. And I try then to think, why do I like this? And then I do the same with if I don't like it. So to me, how have I found my personal style? Through trial and error. And that's what I recommend for everybody. It's just always try something new and also don't be afraid to go back and retry something you thought didn't work. <laughs> this is funny because I always complain about one of them uh, to my girlfriend. My, what, I think my biggest one is you're in a lift coming down to ground floor, it's always typically like the ground floor, doors open, you go to walk out, someone just comes, just walks straight in. And I think why it's a pet peeve to me so much is because from such a young age, my mum taught me to always stand to the side and let whoever is coming out first. Because you have no idea if someone's in there or not, but like you stand to the side, you wait, check if it's clear and go in. Because I think she drilled that in my head. When I see somebody, when I'm coming out, someone almost like barges into me, yeah, that's that's one of that's one of them. That's definitely a pet peeve. And then the other, I had another one. I swear I can play. Oh, this this is a gym one. This is like gym etiquette is when someone is like doing whatever it could be. It's normally like bicep curls in at, in front of all the dumbbells. So you got all the dumbbells there, and they're just doing bicep curls right in front of them. And then you're kind of like, I can't even, bro, I can't even grab those now because you're you're just curling in front of them like no awareness. Those are my weird pet peeves. 100%, like the way I see the clothes right now is that they are unisex. The only thing that we don't really offer is the kind of like more like sizes. That's pretty much it. And changing maybe this shape slightly. So my big goal is to be able to either have a, like a, a unisex, have it all unisex, or introduce a bit more of like a woman's line into it as well. But it's definitely a goal. But again, the brand's not even a year old yet, so. Over time, it's with something I'd definitely like to dive into. I don't even know if I do anymore because I'm always thinking about something. I'm either always thinking about 
the next, let's say, YouTube video. Well, I'm always thinking about like the brand. The brand has been one thing that really messed up my mind because it's like, you got to think so far into the future. Like we're already planning like autumn, winter 24. But then you've also got to think right in this current moment, because let's say you've got to drop like next week and you've got these items that are coming out or this stuff that you're working on. And then you've also like, there's in this in between one and be like, cool, but at the end of this month, you're doing this. So like, it's really messed up me being like present. And if I'm being honest, like, when I'm in London by myself, I'm probably not that present because I'm always kind of working. But when I'm with my girlfriend and when we're kind of together, and it doesn't even have to be together, it's like when we're back in kind of like our living together kind of state, I'm a lot more present then because I'm having, I was gonna sound sad saying, because it's not, I'm having a lot more fun. And it's not that I don't enjoy what I'm doing, it's just you need that balance. And when it's just work, in my mindset, it's just on work, then I'm not that present. So currently, yes, most of you probably know that I used to do it weekly, but this year has just been chaotic. Again, with launching a brand, it's been hard. It has been so hard. So the videos have started to go to every second week, it allowed me to have more time to kind of think about what I was putting out and not just to put out just anything, just to make sure I hit a weekly target. Also, it's just getting too much for me, like editing and stuff. And like, I really enjoy, I really, really enjoy making like the London Diaries videos. And when I was trying to do them weekly, it made me almost stop enjoying them because it started to feel like work opposed to again, just enjoyment. Like I love editing my videos. Like I will, this is kind of going off on a tangent. I, <laughs> people often say to me like, well, you get someone to, you know, hire someone in to edit your videos and things like that. No, it's never gonna happen because to me, the editing is my favorite bit of the London Diaries videos. It's my favorite thing of, I, I import all the footage from like over a week or two and it is chaos and it makes no sense. There is no storyline. I mean, not necessarily I even have much of a storyline in my videos, but there's just nothing. And I love creating something from it. It's my favorite thing. Like it truly is finding the music, creating the flow. I'd love it to be able to come back to once a week, but for now it is on an every second week. Countryside is always gonna have kind of my heart. Uh, it's definitely a lot more of the way I was raised and it's like so much more peaceful. Like my parents' place is so peaceful in New Zealand and I definitely see the value in that. And I would like to get to something like that. It doesn't need to be New Zealand, um, but like that countryside or just a bit more of that peace and quiet, uh, that's definitely something like I'd be striving for. But for right now, I do love cities because my life is very go, go, go. I like being in a city that's very go, go, go with like opportunities and things constantly moving. Um, but yeah, like long-term countryside. Oh, gotta love the internet, eh? Um, so the truth is, is that I, I actually haven't. What I've done is I've started for the past, I think like maybe a few months now, started eating in a very slight caloric surplus, mainly because that's what I like to do this time of year when it gets colder. I like to give my body a rest from trying to be like lean in summer and stuff. And I also like to eat this time of year. I like to go out with friends and enjoy myself through this kind of like festive time. I don't want to be restricted and stuff on a diet. And on top of that, it's nice to get my strength back and stuff at the gym. So if anything, I've actually put on size, but with being in a slight caloric surplus, you put on a bit of body fat. When you put on body fat, you know, your muscles are hidden a bit more so you don't look as lean and muscular. But the funny thing about it is that when I then diet down, let's say in summertime, I would have actually gotten slightly smaller, lost a bit of muscle and then I'll actually look bigger. But yeah, like, it's just a weird gym one. And this happens to me and my girlfriend, like, I don't know, it's like four times a year, roughly. You'll have this moment, well, we have this moment where it's like, we'll look in our wardrobe, and you'll have nice clothes and stuff in there, and you'll look in there and be like, I have nothing to wear. I do, you almost have this like, your brain just can't, 
figure out what you like and what you want to wear and you just kind of just have this like it's like brain fart moment you're just like I I don't know what to do. Like I've had it and I'm like, I, I forgot how to dress. It eventually goes, but in that moment, I've learned like, hey, in that moment, do not buy anything, do not sell anything. Just wait it out. Pretty much, apart from kind of touching on what I said before, I probably have a bit more fun. Uh, we have a bit more fun and stuff together. I'm a bit more relaxed about certain things. But on the whole, yeah, pretty much. Like I, I still have to get the same amount of work done. I still go to the gym and do all that but I think I'm a bit more flexible with my time and when I do things. When I'm by myself, it's very regimented. It'll be like, cool, each day you go to the gym here, for between here and here, you do whatever, X and X, and then here you go, whatever. It's very regimented. Where when I'm with her, I'm a lot more flexible, just easy going with it, still get everything done. I would like to have a store. I don't know if it'll be soon. My dreams for the brand is, I guess my dreams for the brand is to have a store because the way I envision this store is almost like a happy place for me and I want it to be like a happy place for other people to go to so I'm gonna try and paint this picture for you and maybe it won't seem as cool the way I'm describing it because I'm not great at describing things but like I pretty much want it to be this place that embodies this, London Diaries. I want it to be a place that's like, you walk in, it's like a nice, bright, open space with natural lighting. You know, you come in, for example, like on the left, there's, you know, there's chairs, tables, you know, coffee table, magazines down, like a nice, you know, bit of like comfortable seating where people can relax. We have like a coffee shop, you know, serving like really nice coffees and obviously pastries. I want to have some just really, really top notch, top notch pastries. And then I want to have like, it doesn't even sound like I'm opening a, like a clothing store, does it? Because then I want to have a flower bit, you know, where we sell things like lilies and other flowers. I pretty much only know lilies, but uh, it's where you can buy your flowers and stuff as well. And then obviously I want to have, you know, some like, along the side or things like that is you know the the rails of you know the Daniel Simmons clothing that people can can shop can look at and whatnot but I kind of almost want it to be a place that like a stranger can walk into knowing nothing about the clothing line and be like this is a really nice coffee shop that sells pastries and flowers and then be like oh huh there's some clothing there as well. But yeah, that, that's kind of my goal. And then obviously just some really nice smooth jazz just playing like, that is, that's that's my dream for the brand. Like I'd hang out there every day, just shooting coffees, selling clothes. Like I love the idea of that. On days that I'm feeling really low, whether it be my confidence or I don't know, whatever else it could be, but on days that I'm feeling really low, what I do, and it's because I've just learned this now over time with myself, the best thing for me to do is literally to go for a walk, like outside or to the gym. And when I say like to the gym, I'm not talking about weights, I'm still just on about like walking. Put your sweatpants on, put a hoodie on, hood on, like pull the drawstrings tight so you kind of the rest of the world doesn't exist. Headphones on, and I might not even listen to music. It might just be like I've gone for walks, so I've got my headphones on because I kind of want the noise cancelling and to feel like, again, I'm in my own world and nothing else exists. And I just want to go and walk. And it's just like a fast walk. I mean, you can go for a run as well, but I find to motivate myself for a run, if I'm already feeling down, it's not gonna happen. But to motivate myself for a walk, that's achievable. Like I know I can do that. So I'll go for like a fast pace, you know, like 40, 45 minute walk. And enough's where it starts. I start sweating a little bit, you know, and the key is to get the endorphins flowing, to get the body moving. And then after that, I just feel better. And from that moment on, then I'm like, okay, cool. Like I've had it where times I've done that and then I've come home and I'm kind of in that momentum. So I'm like, mm, okay, I might clean up the house a little bit. I might do this. Like I feel a bit better. I think it would be the Pana Chocolat. The reason I say that is because I wouldn't have more than one Pana Choc I wouldn't have more. Okay, I probably would have two a day. Okay, wait, hold up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have more than two Pana Chocolats two days in a row. Where I definitely would have two coffees five days in a row. 
So as much as I like a pan chocolate or a pastry, there's something, do you know what it is? It's not even the two coffees, it's the one coffee still. I love my first coffee of the morning. There is something so peaceful about that for me. My black coffee, that's how I like it. First thing in the morning, and I know, you know, wait this whole hour and things like that. No, I tried that, it was depressing. Spending that first hour, not being able to have that peaceful moment was terrible. Like, I don't really have my first coffee of the day to wake me up or anything like that. I have it as this just moment to myself of just, <sighs> and it's like this moment to get ready for the day. Yeah, coffee is the simple answer. I don't think there's this like one thing that stands out to me or one thing that I'm like most proud of. I think, I guess actually what it comes out, I think I'm, what I'm most proud of is me. Because when, when I was in school, I didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel special. I didn't, I didn't have a super talent. I wasn't talented at music or I, I didn't have anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I played sports, but like, I didn't, I didn't have anything. And I only played sports because I kind of got like, you get pushed into sports from a young age. I didn't even know if I liked sports, off topic. But I never felt like I had a great talent or anything like that. And it's only been, in all honesty, in the last few years where I've started to kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like, I kind of never felt good enough. And what I'm most proud of is, I kind of feel it getting emotional. What I'm like most proud of is it's like, I now know that I have the, I might not have the talent and like the skill of something naturally, but what I do have is the motivation to learn what is needed to be learned. Now, I don't know if this even makes sense, but like, that doesn't mean I can go off and learn French tomorrow. Because I, even if I wanted to do it as a fun hobby, I have no interest and I would fail at it. But if it's something that I feel I need to learn, I can do it because that's what I did with YouTube. That's what I did with photography. That's what I did with the clothing brand. That's what I did with fashion. I knew nothing about any of these things. I still don't know much about them, but I'm continuously putting in the time and the effort to learn. And that's what I think I'm most proud of is that within myself. <laughs> yes, I definitely do. I get frustrated on a kind of probably like a daily basis just with everything. Uh, the biggest way I found it for me to deal with frustration is I like to have a bitch in mind for 10 to 20 minutes. I like to get it all out of my system, just unfiltered frustration, whether I'm talking to my, like getting it out to my girlfriend or a friend or anything like that, or even to myself, I like to get it out and then I feel better. By the time I've gotten it out, I either realize, ah, oh, well, you were like, you, this shouldn't affect you, you're overreacting, or I'm like, cool, you've had your complaining, now do something about it. So that's what helps me with like frustration. Uh, sadness, yes. Um, the main, the main times that I'm like the saddest is when I'm in London by myself because it feels very lonely because my girlfriend's in New York, who I love, and my family is in New Zealand, who I love. And yes, I do have friends here, but it's something about that situation when I'm in my apartment and it's like, I it feels quite lonely. So even if I was socializing with friends all throughout the day, I'd still come home to being in a place by myself. And I used to not feel that way, just so you know. I've been living alone for a, a long time now. It's only recently because I want to be a part of a family now. I would say it comes across a lot nicer than it really is. It is very stressful. It is a lot of traveling. It's a lot of stress with the brand and just everything work-wise. Uh, even the fact that you have like some of your wardrobe here in London, some of it in New York, it's, 
it's not ideal. I mean, I, w I wouldn't, I don't want to be in the situation. Just, you know, like, so you're clear, I would love to just be in one place. So yeah, it, it comes across much nicer than it is. I'm very grateful that I can be in this position to travel to and from, but I do want to, you know, bring it to an end. So that's a little bit more of a personal Q and A. What I kind of just want to end on is that please always remember that these YouTube videos are just highlight reels. You know, they're like highlight moments or moments that I enjoyed or enjoyed filming from the last week or two. There's a lot more behind the scenes of stuff that you don't see, a lot of ups and a lot of downs and stuff as well. So try and remember that like no one's life is perfect and you have no idea what's going on behind the scenes or behind closed doors. Whether that again, content creators or even your friends, like you, you never know fully like the full picture. So again, try not to compare your full story with someone else's highlighted moments. I hope that came across right. Anyway, I love you guys. Thanks. Thanks heaps for watching. <laughs>